By regulatory transparency, I mean the transparency that's related to the actions of regulators. And regulators play an important role in promoting both information transparency and regulatory transparency. Information transparency should reveal the risks that financial firms and markets uh, have, and the regulatory transparency should communicate how supervisors will respond to situations that are threatening the financial system. During, I think it's pretty obvious that during the financial crisis, uh, information transparency and regulatory transparency were not optimal. The risks associated with the various financial instru instruments were unclear. The extent to which specific financial institutions held risky assets was unclear. The ability of supervisors to assess and communicate the status of individual firms and the potential impact of those firms on the financial system were unclear. And the actions that supervisors and other government ent entities would take in the case of a failure of firms that endangered the financial system were unclear. So in the absence of clarity, market participants assumed the worst and they took actions that in many cases exacerbated the situation, pushing the financial system um, towards collapse. A well-functioning financial system relies on accurate information about the condition of each participant. Investors have to have information that they need to effectively monitor financial institutions and to withhold funding from those institutions that they think are engaging in excessively risky activities. The goal of information transparency and regulatory transparency is to increase market discipline. Greater market discipline enhances the likelihood that financial institutions and where appropriate their uninsured creditor bear the cost of taking excessive risks. Banking supervisors cannot be expected to know about and prevent everything that could go wrong and neither can financial markets. However, supervisors and markets will be better able to limit the risks to the financial system and to support overall financial stability when they have access to accurate information. Since the financial crisis, progress has been made toward both greater information transparency and um, about the various financial firms, but uh, I think progress has also been made in greater regulatory transparency about supervisors' actions. The stress tests um, of large, complex holding companies and the, and the associated comprehensive capital analysis and review, which we call CCAR, provide a great illustration of both information and regulatory transparency. The stress tests, um, as you know, began in, in early 2009. Uh, at that time, it was called the Supervisory Capital Assessment Program, or SCAP. And SCAP restored the confidence in individual banks and in the um, overall financial system. And it, it, it did restore that confidence by providing more information on how much capital uh, the largest U.S. banks would need in, in or under a macroeconomic uh, stress scenario. SCAP also demonstrated the commitment of regulators to force firms that were short of capital to either go out and raise capital in the private sector or to take equity from the U.S. Treasury. Now, the decision to make the results of individual banks as part of the original SCAP program drew strong resistance uh, both inside and outside the Federal Reserve System. Uh, some of my own staff, uh, and I remember spending a lot of time talking about, um, about this, uh, some of my own staff expressed some concerns and some doubts about um, whether the public would be well served 
by seeing the results from specific institutions. However, releasing that data proved to be a success um, on two levels. First, SCAP broke new grounds for information transparency by disclosing which firms needed additional capital and how much capital they needed. And second, uh, it broke new grounds uh, for the regulatory transparency by showing that regulators would enforce capital requirements and impose consequences for those firms that fell short of those requirements. So SCAP calmed the markets and it did so by increasing the confidence in both the financial institutions and in the supervisory process. Uh, since then, the stress tests have become embedded in what we call the CCAR. And CCAR, again, is, in, is designed to ensure that bank holding companies have good capital plans and that good capital, uh, also ensuring that they have a good capital planning process in place. With CCAR, the Federal Reserve indicates whether uh, a firm's capital plan is approved. Uh, also, with CCAR, we're giving information, disclosing information about the projected loan losses, the uh, income, and the capital levels of these individual institutions under a severely adverse stress scenario. The benefit of transparency regarding stress tests and CCAR is that the public understands which institutions are meeting the Federal Reserve standards and the institutions understand and must bear the penalties for not meeting those standards. And those penalties can be penalties that are imposed by the regulators and imposed by the marketplace. Another example of where regulators are making progress in terms of information transparency and, regula and regulatory transparency is with the resolution plans that are required by the Dodd-Frank Act. These plans, which are commonly known as living wills, detail the steps that um, have to be taken by systemically important financial firms in the event of their failure. The living wills are intended to limit the impact of one firm's failure on the entire financial system. And last year, 11 systemically important financial institutions submitted living wills to the Federal Reserve and to the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Both of these agencies are working together with those institutions to ensure that the living wills will actually be able to uh, have an orderly and rapid resolution of the firms in the event of a failure. A portion of the, each of these firms' living wills has been, have been made um, public. Therefore, I view that as enhancing information transparency. Importantly, though, the regulators are working to strengthen this process. Uh, following their review of these, these initially submitted uh, resolution plans, the Federal Reserve and the FDIC has, um, have together developed some instructions for the firms to detail the information that should be included in their 2013 resolution plan submission. In particular, uh, the Federal Reserve and the FDIC have asked the firms to detail the obstacles that would exist for, from them executing these resolution plans under the bankruptcy code. Now, in my view, it, it's really critical that the public come to see these living wills as credible resolution plans. And I, again, believe that transparency can be of great assistance in that regard.